<laughs> so many beautiful things. <laughs> I cannot possess them all. <laughs> Hello, my name is Kerry Arth, and today we are going to take a little look at what happened at Warhammer Fest. And uh, I'm afraid if you're after anything particularly constructive, you are most likely not going to find it in this video. It's mostly just me going to be drooling over delightful, lovely models. And um, yeah, we're just going to have a look at what Games Workshop unveiled, not just 40k, but Age of Sigmar as well, specifically because they have some ridiculously nice um, night haunt ghosty spooky boy models that I, I just love how over the top they are now I'm afraid you will not be um, I was gonna say graced you will not be uh, <laughs> uh, like forced to endure my face for this video uh, largely because we're windows just you know I, so I'm, I'm getting angry just thinking about it hang on let me just chill out a second okay Windows decided that even though I have updates turned off because Windows is a bag of shit and likes to just break everything at random, it decided no, no, you may have decided that you don't want to get updates, but I'm going to give you one anyway. And it broke literally everything. It has taken me two hours just to get this goddamn microphone working and the webcam is still out of commission because God knows what it's done to that. It's probably literally burnt it from the inside, which means I'll have to get another one. Uh, Windows is the worst thing ever made and I will fight anyone who says otherwise. That's not true, that's hyperbole, but still, it's really fucking annoying. Okay, we're going to start with, well, the, the one that has been on the screen since the start of the video, largely because this picture, it, it revealed to me that actually, having said, you know, it would be nice with Sisters of Battle if we could have a mix of different things, I still think it is nice if we could have a mix of different styles, you know, different choices of, of chest, maybe something a bit more modern. Um, I realised as soon as I saw this that I would not be using any of those because that is exactly what I want. That is a classic, classic, classic sister of battle. It looks ridiculously good. I absolutely love it. As soon as I saw it, I was moister than an oyster. It, look at it. It's so good. It's so good. It just gets me excited. It gets me really excited for um, just Sist of Battle in general. And if they're going to look like that, then I am not only 100% on board. Well, I already was. I'm now like... I. The hype train has now left the station and is approaching possibly several hundred miles an hour. It may well fly off the track and crash into a mountain. I don't care. I'm there for the ride. It looks so good. I'm so happy with it. And I, I want more. I need more immediately. From what I've uh, heard, various rumblings from people who actually were there at Warhammer Fest, sadly I could not attend, um, this was like a teaser thing, there's going to be a bigger reveal later on, which I, I kind of expected, but it's nice to have it confirmed. It just looks class, I'm super happy with that, I, I want it in my hands so I can uh, just admire it in person. I don't know why I was going to get weird with it then, but I didn't. I reined it in. It's fine. Now, I mentioned the Age of Sigma stuff, the Night Haunt Spooky Boy guys, and we're going to take a look at those because I'm I'm loving I'm loving these lads. I don't know what they were on when they made them, but look, look at this. Look at the absolute utter absurdity of that model. Look at it. I thought the fish elves were kind of out there and a bit sort of, oh, this is... This is weird as hell. What are they doing? This guy, he he wins all the awards for the most over-the-top, ridiculous design I think I've seen of a of, of of any model recently. It's not enough that he's a ghost. It's not enough. You can't just be a ghost. You've got to have other ghosts coming out of you if you're going to be a real ghost. Not only that, but the the other ghosts surely have to be <laughs> circling round a hangman's noose. The, <laughs> I mean, it's tied to it. He's got... It's a ghost with ghosts coming out of him, with a hangman's noose coming out of his back, strapped to him, obviously, of course, what else would you do with it, with a spectral ghostly axe that is forming out of mist on the floor. I saw people who were like, that looks a bit ridiculous, that looks a bit absurd. Of course it does, and it's fucking amazing. Look at it. I don't know what you could use it for in 40k. I mean, I'd hope that there's some genius, some mad scientist out there would be able to come up with some kind of uh, 
some kind of like conversion for this thing. But I love it. I love how like ridiculous it's getting over there, over in Age of Sigmar land. It's, it's getting so mental. But I really like it. It's so unique. It's so different. It's like, let's face it, any any wanker could make a, like a, a classic sheet over the head ghost. Not many people could come up with something that mad and have it look that good. It looks class. Not only that, but I mean, this 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 guy. That's creepy as hell to me. It, it's it's like a mildly armored ghost with like weird fang face and. It's got, like, keys and locks. I mean, it's a little bit on the nose when it comes to the symbolism of it, but I really like it. It's so... It's just so different again, you know? Um, and, you know, a lot of this stuff is similar. If you can't get a scythe, just get a bell on the stick. That's, you know, that's that's sensible. you got you got to work with what you've got. I'm really liking these models. That is ridiculous. I really love that. That's... I mean, it's, it's a classic pose, but... <laughs> if you look at him, I've only just noticed this, which makes it so good. It, it, he's he's floating above the horse. I mean, you could argue that he probably doesn't need to ride it, but he is anyway, and that's you know that's class to me. I really like it. It's it's so good. What seems to be Ghost Skaven, as well, which is amazing. There's no reason they have to all be humans. You know, there's plenty of other races. Expanding out into things like Ghost Skaven, I'm all, I'm all for it. I'm all for that. It, it just, it looks so good, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just, I'm really, I'm really liking how, I guess how daring they're being in a way. They, they're not just like, I feel like they're not just playing it safe with releases um, in Age of Sigma, at least. It, it's just like. Okay, what can we do to make this as kind of impactful as possible? Should we give them all chains? Should we like give them armor? Should we have have a ghost with another ghost coming out of it? Yeah, sure, let's do it. Let's just do it. It just it's so good. I'm loving it. I'm loving the uh, the direction it's going. I know there's going to be plenty of people who are like, no, no, it's too cartoony. I don't like it. That's fair. That's fair enough. But for me, this is. It, like this is just cool shit. I really like what they're doing with it. Okay, I we have to talk. <laughs> we have to talk about this bloody thing as well. Uh, other people were getting excited about Adeptus Titanicus. I was uh, I was more like, yeah, but giant Necron constructs. Don't even play Necrons. Don't have a Necron army. But uh, I would absolutely own that because look at it. Look at I mean look at the size of it. Holy shit. I like it because it's... It's not what I would expect from a giant Necron construct. I would expect something more kind of monolith-like. I think there's an element of uh, unexpectedness to it, which is making me appreciate it more. And I think it's a bit more imposing because it's not what I would have down as a Necron construct strictly looking like. It's... It's so kind of unmistakably alien and kind of, I guess in a way, kind of classic sci-fi somehow, but I'm not sure where I've got that idea from. It's just, yeah, it's it's not what I was expecting. And as a result, I think I like it more than I would have liked like just a big monolith or something. It's, it's actually an interesting kind of design. And I think maybe a few years ago I would have been like, mm, I'm not sure about that, but because of the direction the Necrons have taken, I think it fits pretty well. Overall, it's just a it's just a kind of a cool looking model, really. Lots of little details and stuff all over it. And I really like the way the construction like the way that it's constructed too. No, it'd be really easy to stick like a set of legs at the back, one set at the front and then have like the massive ones coming over the top but the way that it's kind of slanted where the legs are at the back it's it's a little bit different it's a little bit unique i think they've done a decent job with it and i i'd really like to see one of those in the flesh because they look badass okay there are a few pictures of uh, the adeptus titanicus stuff as well this i'm not entirely sure how i feel about this now i was quite excited about it but i'm not gonna lie this doesn't look to me like a 
like a game that I'm going to get massively invested in for a couple of reasons, if I'm honest. Um, the first is, while I do like the smaller scale, and it does look like it's something I would enjoy, the cost of it, I suspect, is going to be a lot higher than any of the other kind of skirmish or specialist games. This is not going to be something where it's like, oh yeah, if you if you if you spend hundred quid with a mate, you can have a few games of Necromunda. Yeah, it's not going to be like that. Um, they've said that this is like going to be one of the more expensive or the most expensive games they've done, and as a result, I can see it. I can honestly see it. Um, the kits seem to be plastic and there's a lot of detail to him and there's a lot of parts to him and I kind of feel like that is going to stand in the way of people who want to get into this on a budget um, especially when you consider like the size of the scenery and stuff I, I think this is going to be a properly costly thing to get into I don't think this is going to be like the other skirmish games you know I don't think this is going to be a case of like I say like Necromunda or um or whatever Rogue Trader turns out to be, or even Kill Team, it's going to be, I think, way more costly than that, a lot more difficult to get into, and will require a lot more to keep up, if that makes sense. You know, if they, depending on how they expand it and introduce new models, I think it could get just as expensive as 40k, to be perfectly blunt. I, I, I think that there's a danger that it could go that way, in which case I would be disappointed because I would not be able to reasonably be able to support a decent Titanicus force alongside, you know, playing 40k at the same time. But, I mean, like, product-wise and design-wise, it looks pretty damn cool. You know, those I think those who do get into it and who do end up playing it, um, if it does turn out to be that kind of more expensive approach... I kind of feel like they're going to be getting a, a good quality product out of it, but if it is properly pricey, then that's going to limit its appeal quite significantly, I think. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, I don't think that's a problem as such, but uh, yeah, it's 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 a little bit disappointing in a way. Although, then again, um, when we first heard about this, I was pretty convinced it was going to be just a Forge World thing, which would have made it even more expensive, so... Whilst it might turn out to be costly, um, it, it's still probably going to be more approachable than if it was just a Forge World endeavor. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. There's also a, a few other things that I, I I grabbed stuff that I really liked, um, and uh, some of it is, again, it's Age of Sigma related. But these kind of these objective markers, these scenery things. There's some interesting design coming in here, and I, I kind of like the direction they're taking it, where they I think they could do with making a lot more of this kind of thing. Things just to decorate the battlefield, things to make things more interesting. Um, especially like the creepy rock of faces, that looks pretty awesome. More of this kind of thing I think would be appreciated. Whilst I do like kit bashing things like objective markers and so on, not everyone does. And stuff like this looks good and fulfills a good purpose as well. Um, there's also the ridiculous uh, <laughs> Ghostbusters reference <laughs> Sigmarine, um, which I this is an upscaled version of the model that's going to be put into production. I would absolutely have that as like an Inquisitor or something for 40k. I would totally do a conversion job on that. It looks solid. I've no idea why Sigmar is apparently having souls collected for himself seems a little bit evil but what do i know i'm not a massive age of sigma person um, <laughs> it does look pretty cool though it's a, it's a decent model it looks nice there's also the gigantic like absurdly huge chaos dragon which i'll be honest i want for no reason other than i mean just look at the size of the lad again it's like a necron construct sort of thing where it's like i don't play it don't have anything to do with it i would totally own that model look at it it's mental I just really like the design of it. Again, I think they've done a really a really decent job. It's creepy, it's massive, it's clearly terrifying. Yeah, it's it's a nice, it's a nice, nice model. It's also gonna be real expensive. They are also bringing back Forge World the Dreadnought Drop Pod. So if you're it's one of those people who never got around to grabbing one of those, soon your your time will come. You'll be able to get another one. I'm not too fussed about that myself, but I know that the Dreadnought Drop Pod was quite a um, 
It was quite a popular thing, and I think it's been gone for a while. I'm pretty sure it's not been available for a while. I could be wrong on that. Feel free to correct me. As I say, I, I've never had need of one, so um, I could just be talking shite, but I don't think it's been in production for a bit. There's also the hilarious uh, <laughs> Scorpion. Um, I think he said Tech Marine. You know what I mean. Mechanicum Maniac, which, again, I love this model. I absolutely love this model. I don't know what the hell I'd ever use it for. I don't have an Admech Force. It's unlikely I'll ever have an Admech Force. But it's one of those things where I look at it and I'm like, I want to own that just to own it. And I want to own it so I can paint it and then it will sit there. And I don't care because it'd be great. It's just, a, it's just so weird. It's so weird and it's so kind of out there, even compared to other like majors. It's just, it's just mad. I really like it. And finally, uh, what's her name? Janicia Kroll. I probably pronounced her first name completely incorrectly, as I do with everything else. I quite like it, but I have to admit that. Um, I think this is one I will pick up. I will use the head that has the massive iron faceplate on the front just because I think it looks a little bit better. But the model as a whole, I really like. This is the direction I would have preferred them go with um, Valdor. I would have preferred a more understated look. Still, still kind of ornamental, but not I have the corpse of an animal draped over my shoulder ornamental, you know? It's a little more understated, but it's still fairly obviously someone important, which I think is exactly the right balance. It's the kind of balance that I like, so I really, really like that model. Plus, you could use it for anything. You could use it for an Inquisitor. You could use it for a leader for Sisters of Battle with a little bit of conversion um, love on it. It's just pretty damn cool. Okay, so that is pretty much all the stuff I really like from Warhammer Fest. There are some people who I know were disappointed with the lack of 40k info. Um, I know there are some people who thought there was going to be a massive reveal. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I, don't, I know there are a few people who set themselves up for expecting some sort of insane drop of like, here's a Primarch and here's Gazgul and here's this and here's that and the other. But we never had any indication that would be the case. So there was no sort of leaks, there was no rumours, there was no um, build-up by Games Workshop to that. Um, and... Whilst there wasn't a huge amount of 40k information, there was stuff for Adeptus Titanicus, and much though I know a lot of people love to complain about Age of Sigma, the fact is that Games Workshop runs two major systems, and Age of Sigma is now a major system. So there's going to be 40k stuff sometimes, there's going to be Age of Sigma stuff other times. In this case, it was the second edition of Age of Sigma. You can, at the very least, I would hope, appreciate some of the miniatures that were unveiled, even if they're not for 40k, and even if the game system is not for you. Let's face it, 40k has had a not insignificant number of releases since it went into 8th. Um, the launch of the new Death Guard and the primary stuff, again, whether you like them or not, was pretty massive and dominated all of the Games Workshop stuff for quite some time, and since then we've had the Adeptus Custodes and... You know, I, I think I think it's been pretty balanced. It might not feel it when, you know, you go to an event expecting big news for your system, but I think overall, over the last year or so, the actual releases between the two have been pretty balanced, they have been pretty fair, and but let's face it, we've not done too bad about bad out of all of this because we're nearly towards the end of the eighth edition codex is coming out, so I think every now and again Age of Sigma getting something, it's not really that much to complain about, if I'm honest. And there's some interesting stuff at the very least that you could mess with in the 40k sense from the releases that they've shown. So I was pretty happy. I was pretty happy with it. But then I am someone who appreciates things like um, models and and I'd say story more than specific kind of um, focused releases for either 40k or Age of Sigma. I just have an, an overall greater appreciation for things that look nice. And Warhammer Fest was filled with shit that looked nice. So that makes me happy. 
The question is, what did you think of it? Is there anything you saw that you liked? Anything you saw that you really hated? What do you think of the Necron Construct, actually? I'd be interested what you guys think about that, because it's, it is interesting, it is different. Let me know in the comments below, and as always, uh, feel free to click the links on the screen in front of you, a couple of videos, page on, subscribe, all of that shit. Click it if you like, don't click it if you don't want to, and I will see you for the next one, where hopefully I'll have a working webcam again. Toodaloo.